In this video, I will show you how to integrate trig functions using natural logs. This is something that you just have to memorize. The integral of tangent u du is negative natural log absolute value cosine u plus c. So let's jump in and do our u substitution. We will let u equal 5 theta, which means that u prime is going to equal 5. So when we do the u substitution, we're going to get tangent u. Instead of uh, d theta, we will put du over u prime, which is 5. Of course, I can just take the 5 from the denominator and write it out in the front as a 1 fifth. So now we have this, which we know to be this. So we get negative 1 fifth natural log absolute value of cosine u plus c. Substituting the 5 theta back in for u, we get this for the final answer. For number 36, we can integrate term by term. So we have the integral of 2 d theta minus the integral of tangent theta over 4 d theta. So this first part is just going to be 2 theta plus c, but you know we have more coming. So we can just focus on the tangent. Let's go ahead and do a little u substitution over here. We will let uh, u equal theta divided by 4. That means that u prime is going to equal 1 fourth. So let's do that substitution. So we have the integral of tangent u. Instead of d theta, we will write du divided by u prime. So that's divided by 1 fourth. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm just going to put the 4 out in the front like this. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, we have our memorized rule that the integral of tangent is going to be a negative natural log of cosine u plus c. So that's this part. Um, however, we already had a negative, so this is going to make it into a positive. And don't forget the 4, so we have this. And let's bring down our 2 theta, which isn't going anywhere. If you substitute theta over 4 back in for u, you have this for the final answer. By the way, I didn't have to split it up first. Um, I could have just jumped right in with my u substitution and let u equal theta over 4. u prime is going to equal 1 fourth. When I do the u substitution, I have this. Of course, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to take this 1 fourth and put it out in the front as a 4. Now I am going to integrate term by term. The integral of 2 will be 2u. Don't forget we have u now instead of theta. And then here comes that memorized rule. So the integral of 2u is going to be negative absolute value, well no, negative natural log absolute value of cosine u plus c. Uh, of course, this minus a negative is going to just be a positive. Distributing the 4 across, I have this. And now let's put the theta over 4 back in for u. So now we have this. Notice that 4 divides evenly into 8. So if I go ahead and just do that, then I end up with 2 theta. And this is the exact same thing that I got the last time. For number 40, I could split this up, but I think I'll try to do it without splitting it up first. So u will equal 2x, 
which means that u prime will equal 2. Making the substitution, we have the integral of secant u plus tangent u. Instead of dx, we will write du over u prime. So that's du over 2, which will be the same thing as a 1 half in the front. We are about to need another rule that I haven't mentioned yet in this video. The integral of secant u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant u plus tangent u plus c. So we have this so far. Now I need to take the integral of tangent u, and this is another memorized rule. We get negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine u. And then uh, I will put the plus c on the outside. Distributing the one half, so we have the one half here and here, and letting u equal 2x again. So we have the 2x here, here, and here. This is the final answer. There is another form of the answer that will probably show up on a multiple choice question. So uh, I need to remind you of a property of logarithms. Natural log a minus natural log b is equal to natural log a over b. So this is like my a, and this is like my b. So natural log a minus natural log b is the same as natural log of a over b. So I'm going to put secant u plus tangent u over cosine u. And uh, let's just put the whole thing inside of the absolute value. Don't forget about the one half that's out in the front, or the plus c. Replacing u with 2x, we have this. And this is the answer that you are more likely to see on a multiple choice question. For the last couple of problems, we are finding the area under a curve. But the area under a function from a to b is the same as the integral of the function from a to b. Let's temporarily remove the limits of integration until after we finish the u substitution. Let's let u equal the natural log of x. In that case, u prime will equal 1 over x. After the substitution, we have 2 over x times u, and then we replace dx with du over u prime. So that's du over 1 over x. So x times 1 over x cancels itself out. This will just make a 1. So these are gone now. So now we have the integral of 2 over u du. And uh, in fact, let's move the 2 out in the front, which will leave this as 2 times 1 over u du. So that'll be uh, 2 times the natural log of u, well, the absolute value of u, plus c. But u is the natural log of x. So we get 2 times the natural log of the natural log of x, that's so weird, plus c. Let's put the limits of integration back in so we can find the area from 2 to 4. So we need to take our antiderivative and evaluate it from 2 to 4. In other words, we need to take the value at 4 and subtract the value at 2. This is a valid answer, but this is not what you would see on a multiple choice question. So let's keep going. Um, for the next step, I'm going to factor out this common factor of 2 that I see. So I'm going to pull that 2 back outside. I don't need the absolute value symbols anymore because we can see that these are positive values on the inside already. So I'm just going to write natural log of natural log 4 
minus natural log of natural log 2. Now we are ready to use this property of logarithms. Natural log A minus natural log B equals natural log A over B. This is the A and this is the B. So this is our natural log A over B. And we still have this 2 out in the front. In a moment, we can use another property of natural logs to simplify even further. But first, I need to rewrite this a, a tiny bit. So we have 2 natural log of 4 is the same thing as 2 squared, of course. So here's that other property I was mentioning. If I have the natural log of a to the c power, that is equal to c times the natural log of a. In other words, if you have the natural log of something with a power, you're allowed to take that power and put it to the front. So I'm going to do that right now with this 2. I can take this 2 and put it in the front. If I do that, I will have 2 times the natural log of, and in the numerator, I now have 2 natural log of 2. So you can probably see why I just did that, because now these are going to cancel each other out. So this is your final answer, and this is what you would most likely see on a multiple choice question. Let's do one more. We need to find the area under this curve. If this is pi over 2, then this will be pi over 4, and this will be 3 pi over 4. To find the area we are looking for, we will ultimately need to evaluate this definite integral from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. Let's let u equal 1 plus cosine x. In that case, u prime will equal negative sine x. When we do this substitution, let's not write the limits of integration because these are x values and we're putting in u's now, so let's treat this as an indefinite integral until we put the x's back in. So we will have the integral of sine x over u, and instead of dx, we will write du over u prime, which is negative sine x. We see that we have a sine x in the numerator and the denominator, so these will cancel each other out. And uh, let's put the negative out in the front of the integral. So we have negative integral of 1 over u du. We know that the integral of 1 over u is natural log u, well, natural log absolute value of u, plus c. But then u was 1 plus cosine. So we have negative natural log absolute value of 1 plus cosine x. Uh, and normally I would put plus c. But it is time to put the limits of integration back in. So we want to evaluate from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. So I'm going to write that like this, uh, pi, pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. This means we need to find the value at 3 pi over 4 and subtract the value at pi over 4. So now I have this. Of course, minus a negative is a positive. So I'll just go ahead and put a big old plus sign right here. So we have negative natural log absolute value of 1 plus, uh, but what is the cosine of 3 pi over 4? Well, that's um, either radical 2 over 2 or negative radical 2 over 2, depending on the quadrant. Because 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant, cosine is negative. So I have 1 minus radical 2 over 2. 
and then moving on to the next term natural log absolute value of 1 plus radical 2 over 2. This is a valid answer right now for a free response question. I'm going to keep going because this does simplify quite a bit. And uh, what if you run into a multiple choice question? This will not be what the answer looks like. So my next move is going to be to uh, simplify what's inside this absolute value. I'm going to do that by writing 1 as 2 over 2. So this is like 2 over 2 minus radical 2 over 2. And same thing over here. So I have 2 over 2 plus radical 2 over 2. So I did that so I can write uh, 2, pl uh, sorry, 2 minus radical 2 all over 2. And over here, I have 2 plus radical 2 over 2. I'm going to reverse these terms so I can have a simple something minus something. So I have swapped these around. I am not writing absolute value anymore because I can tell that both of these are positive, so the absolute value symbols are not needed. Remember your properties of logarithms. Natural log A minus natural log B is equal to natural log of A over B. So that's the situation in which we find ourselves right here. So I'm going to have natural log of A over B. So this is going to be 2 plus radical 2 over 2 divided by 2 minus radical 2 over 2. But these 2's in the denominator will cancel each other out. So I end up with natural log of 2 plus radical 2 over 2 minus radical 2. And this is probably what you would see on a multiple choice question. Well, maybe. There's actually one more thing that you might see. We have 2 plus radical 2 over 2 minus radical 2. What if we rationalize the denominator, which is a thing that they sometimes do for a multiple choice question. So that would be multiplying by the conjugate. So 2 plus radical 2. Uh, but then you have to do the same thing in the numerator. So 2 plus radical 2 up there as well. What would happen? So in the numerator, um, I'm going to end up with 4 plus 4 radical 2 plus 2. All right, I'm just foiling this out. In the denominator, I have a squared minus b squared. So this will be 4 minus 2. So this will simplify it down. Uh, so in the numerator, you can see that I have um, 6 plus 4 radical 2. And then in the denominator, I just have 2. So if I divide both of these terms by 2, I get 3 plus 2 radical 2. So another version of the answer that you might see on a multiple choice question is natural log of 3 plus 2 radical 2.